So hello everybody and welcome back to a second part of looking into the MPC Dash Archive Force as a workstation. Yeah, in the first part I look deeply into can the MPC perform in a live situation if you want to use it like a workstation, as you know from the big names like the Roland, Yamaha, Phantom, Montage stuff, and there's several others as well. The result was pretty good, but there were some quirks in some areas, but nevertheless it could be done. And I was somehow imagined that the force with the 3.2 update is now quite similar, but it turns out it's quite different. So let's look into that as well in that video. But first, a correction from the last video. I said that it would not be possible to transpose the different layers or the tracks. And it seems I totally overlooked that there is here a transpose function where you can transpose it up or down by two octaves. But let's look now into the archive force. If you did not watch the previous video, please look at that first. So you get the long introduction. What is it about and what I think that some necessary workstation features are. And the things we will not look into are pretty the same. The main difference is that we don't have the sequences, but instead we have clips and scenes. This has some advantages and drawbacks. I will not go into that. But another thing here worth mentioning is that with the force, you have the option to stream audio tracks as well, so this saves you some loading time in between your different songs. Let's look into the main ideas of layering sound, splitting sound and switching sounds. Does it work the same or is it even possible with the force? Looking at the most basic example, layering two sounds, this works pretty the same. So I loaded up two things here. One is a piano plugin and the other one is a key range group with a sound of kind of pad sound. Here it works a pretty identical, but you go here to the IO section and there you first need to enable also the in settings so it sounds all the time when you play it from your keyboard and also the transpose is available so for example I transpose up the pad because it was too low and for that to do you need to double press here the title of the track then you get to your track settings which also contains the MIDI settings and there you see there is also here this transpose option which works also two octaves up and down and I set it to 24 so it's sounding higher and fits to the piano sound. The next one, velocity is strangely missing here. So there is no velocity setting in the track settings. And even worse, we are also missing the key ranges. So we could not do a bass pad setting here. So it seems that Akai did not add these new features through 3.2, only updated the sounds. You also see that if you go to the sounds browser, which normally has here this key range setting, which we discussed in a lot part, and it seems it's not hopefully yet there, so hopefully it might come in the future, but currently it's not here. Nevertheless, you have set list, so that's something you can use as well with the force. But the key range is a real issue because that's the basic thing to do, that you have a split layer and play a bass, for example, here and a pad with the right hand. And this is not possible on a track level. As a workaround, you could go into your key group. We need to go to the menu and then there is a track edit. And with the track edit, then you can have your key range settings. But this is quite a hassle. For example, here, look at this. This is several keys uh, which are sampled and then you need to delete the these keys or set the key range here accordingly and this is not something you would want to do but nevertheless it would work as a workaround but if you mainly play different sounds and want to switch them then it might work for you so another thing, play external sounds. So MIDI tracks are here as well, which you can also route to the outside. If you go back here to the mixer, that's pretty nice. You can simply add a track. You can also delete the track, which is a big hassle on the MPC. So you could simply add a MIDI track and then say where you want to route it, send it to, and then you can also address an external keyboard module. So switching sounds also a bit tricky because we don't have sequences. So the sequence thing does not work. You can nevertheless use mute and solo, but I think there is no mute groups as far as I understood so far. The another thing you can use and works nicely, which does not exist on the MPC is that you have a crossfader. So that's something you could do. Maybe let's first delete again here the MIDI track. What you could do now is that you say it's uh, here in pen 
volume, you have this AB setting for the crossfader. So you can say you want to have the piano go to A and the pad go to B. And then you could switch between them. So only have the piano. In the middle, they sound both. And here you have only the pad. And since the fader is quite fast, this could be quite handy in a live situation, I think. Then I also wanted to try the trick, as I talked quite extensively in the last video about it, having the option to change between two levels, as I called it, uh, which contains maybe difficult setups with different splits, and these can be changed with an expression pedal. Sadly, I could not make it work. It seems also the MIDI mapping Option MIDI Learn is the previous version and it did not get updated with 3.2. The options are quite similar. So you can say you want to do this submix trick. So send the first track to submix one and send the second one to submix two and then fade between with turning one volume up and the other one the volume down. It has the same issue <laughs> as that I can only map it to one. And I also tried to do then the trick with the project, which is also a Little bit difficult because I noticed that the project is not only an XML file, it's a compressed file. If you want to look for any reason into this file, I can show you also a trick here. This is a project file which is actually compressed. So if you're on Windows, you can say you want to open it with a 7-zip. So 7-zip can read this format and you see there is one file and if you unzip this file. If you open it in your favorite text editor, you will then see it contains a kind of JSON format file with some header information. And quite at the end of the file, you find a MIDI learn settings. And there you see a structure which contains that. So you could change this as well to your 11. And to make that loadable again, you need to compress it again. And it's compressed with the gzip algorithm and 7-zip can do that as well. You need to go to 7-zip and say edit to an archive and if you do so there is then the option to choose as a format for the archive to choose gzip and then you need to do only a final step to rename the zipped file so this is the output to xpj again and then it will also load again in the archive 4. So if you want to tinker with that file there is also maybe some other interesting information in there. It works like this, just as a side note. But nevertheless, it did not work. It, I can load the project again. It also shows up correctly, but it does not work. It only, if you check it, uh, it only works for the submix one. So having both, having only the pad. But it doesn't control the pad. And it also seems to be pretty buggy because if I want to say I want to learn the foot pedal, it now uh, it does not map it at all. So, okay, this is very interesting. The last time it mapped it to a parameter. So I'm not sure if this is really working correctly or if the trick like on the MPC works to reset all the settings. So, hmm, yeah, okay, maybe something to stay away from. Coming to the conclusion already are these workstations and maybe I think we should rule out the force a bit. It depends on what your requirements, but not having key ranges and yeah, can a crossfader, is that enough for you to change in sounds? I'm not sure if this is fine for you or not. It might be a workaround, but it might more be maybe a playback machine for your backing track, which definitely would work nice to do such things. But as a workstation replacement, I would be careful to choose that device. Also, one thing to remember is it's pretty big and clunky and heavy. So the MPC would definitely be a better choice, in my opinion. But what do you think? Tell me about your ideas about the machine. Maybe I again overlooked stuff. So I would like to hear from you down in the comments. And until next time, make some funky music.